Okay, everybody, thank you very much for joining our webinar today. Uh, my name is Craig Hamer. I'm one of the architects at Columbus UK. Um, with me is Stephen Fox and Stephen Curtis from the pre-sales team. I'm going to be walking through um, our upgrade strategy and talking about how we as Columbus approach the technical challenges of taking an earlier version of Dynamics CRM into the cloud and into Dynamics 365 customer engagement. So there's three areas specifically that we're going to be covering on. First is how we get started, and I guess some of the common challenges and aversions to upgrading um, that we see within the marketplace. What our approach is end-to-end -end, and all the finer detail that we go through in order to deliver um, a fully upgraded solution. And then the considerations along the way, such as the technical challenges and any other um, in, internal uh, difficulties that we can face as part of an upgraded project. So when we're looking at an upgrade and um, we're talking about strategically taking um, a product from an earlier version to a later version, there are three main challenges, I will say, um, as part of that process. So for many of our customers, um, they're unsure of the approach due to the various ways that you can approach an up upgraded project. Also, many of the existing systems can be heavily customized, and, and the general feeling within the, 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 the business is that it's far too complex and it's going to be too, um, too time consuming and too costly to go through an upgrade to a later version. And often, some of our customers just don't have the hardware to support um, an on-premise upgrade through the various versions and the ability to license all of the different versions themselves. So other than that, Mr. Curtis, is there anything else that you can think of? I, I think as a contra to that, I would say that the clients that we've worked with already that have done successful upgrades, if you think about the benefits on the other side of moving to Dynamics 365. It's all on cloud, so in, the, in that environment, you don't have to worry about your local hardware. You can do upgrades and, and Microsoft takes care of the heavy lifting of those upgrades because it's a service from Microsoft. And you get all the benefits of 365, so an improved UI, improved performance, yeah. accessibility from, from anywhere really in, in terms of uh, internet access, and a whole host of other benefits that are to do with 365 integration into Office 365 portals etc 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 so the benefits far outweigh the upgrade cost associated with moving to 365 and, and that said hopefully the next section of this now will alleviate some of those concerns by introducing you to our approach it will give you a flavor of how we deal with some of those challenges and mitigate some of these points too So let's look at our approach from a Columbus perspective. Quite often when we come into a new business and a new customer, we have very little detail of how that business op operates and how the system supports that business. So the first phase of our upgrade scenario is really to understand both your business and your system as best as we can in order to get the real feeling of what it is you're trying to achieve through this upgrade procedure. This normally starts with an initial analysis phase and a system health check. Let's get under the hood, have a look at the system that you have in place, what modifications have been done to it, and generally scope out from a very high level the breadth and the depth of the upgrade that needs to take place. This will give us an insight into the estimate and the time and it will take to deliver that upgrade, but also some of the other technical complexities and tease out any of the gotchas that we're going to find later as part of that project. That way we can prepare for them and we can mitigate that risk early. The system familiarization is exactly the same there. Um, we need to understand not only from a technical perspective how the system hangs together, but also how you as a business operate that system, how you use it, how it interacts with your customers and how it delivers a business benefit to you. With that analysis phase done, our next stages then is to take the problem away from you and take this into our own internal environments. So what I mean by that is to replicate your system within the Columbus infrastructure and then with our multiple versions of the platform we can begin um, a systematic upgrade process from each of the different versions and do all of the compatibility checks required in terms of ensuring that your system will be as stable as possible. The compatibility checks and there are a few 
I guess, common um, areas that we check for as part of this process is we'll look for any unsupported modifications. Um, so anything that's been done internally or through other solution providers, we'll ensure that we have a supported means um, to move those from an on-premise to an on-cloud system. So then it's with us to have a look at the existing system and prepare the upgrade plan. So all of the prerequisites that we see on the left hand side here is what we've already done as part of analysis and system familiarization. So now it's with us to take it through the upgrade path all of the way to the target dynamics online instance. In this example, we're using a 2011 version, but we also support upgrades from version four as well. So along the way, there are a lot of milestones and there are a lot of tasks to be performed. So to give you a bit of an indication of those tasks, within each of the version, it's essentially an iterative process to go through a validation exercise, the physical upgrade of a database, and then doing the regression and unit testing to ensure that those um, upgraded components have survived. So it's important at the analysis stage to ensure that we're taking the most lean version of your system as possible through that path, because the less that we have to upgrade from vanilla, there's less chance of those regression tests failing and having to do any rework. Then finally, once we've got the Dynamics 365 on-prem environment, that is when we can do our final shift into Dynamics 365 into the cloud. Then comes the next stages where we have UAT assistance, key user training, uh, any assistance in adopting the, the new user interfaces, and also the, the final parts of regression testing. By going through that process, the end result is then you have the same version of your target system in the latest and greatest platform. So it's ready to build on with the latest technology. And just as an indicative kind of guide to um, the, the, the sort of estimates that we're talking for this process. Um, obviously, this is subject to analysis and the complexity of the system, but we would expect typically for a later version to be uh, fairly, fairly easy as part of an upgrade, so 10 to 20 days. Um, to go through all of these processes, but as you go backwards through the various versions and different parts of the technology become less compatible with Dynamics 365 online, this adds a little bit more time then, um, depending on how far back your current version is. So I just want to talk about very quickly uh, a customer of ours where we've applied this upgrade strategy. Carter Jonas was a customer that we took from CRM version 2011 into Dynamics 365 customer engagement. Uh, and we applied the exact same planner that you've seen here, taking them through the various different versions. One of the key things we did with Carter Jonas was to revisit their heavily bespoke version of Dynamics CRM um, and have a look at what features were in use within the business and what features were no longer needed. And the key part of that is to ensure that we weren't upgrading components that were no longer needed by business process. This made the upgrade process ultimately easier. So then when they were in the latest and greatest platform, this is where we introduced new features and we were able to take advantage of some of the more modern areas of the Dynamics platform, such as Power Apps, things that just weren't possible on the initial version of that product. So let's talk about some of the technical considerations and things um, that everybody should be aware of when we're considering an upgrade from an on-premise system into an online. So first of all, and one of the parts that we need to check as part of the analysis phase is what add-ons that are included in the existing product and ensuring that any of the implementation and the code that's in there is compatible with the latest versions. We also need to ensure that any modifications are compatible with the CRM online platform, because there are many ways to extend the system in previous versions that has to be done in a slightly different way for the newer and, and more modern platform. Then plug-in compatibility, so any business processes that you have in place, again, ensuring that in the latest and greatest technology, those are going to be compatible. Reporting considerations with existing on-premise dynamic CRM implementations, the method of writing reports was slightly different and there are a few restrictions to be aware of with CRM online. 
So part of our job is to have a look at those reports that you have within the system, ensure that they're compatible, and if they're not, we can give an estimate on what it would take to convert that into a compatible report. Data storage considerations is another important one. Um, quite often with on-premise systems, there's normally a file server or some local storage within the infrastructure. And files and documents are saved and the business takes advantage of that storage space. With Dynamics 365 Online, it's important to know that we will need to move to, um, I guess, a hybrid of uh, Dynamics CE and also a SharePoint location for any large files. And then user adoption is probably the most important one. Introducing a change to a business process can have large beneficial effects to a company, but that's only dependent on how well the users know the application. We will give training, guide you through that process, and show you all of the latest and greatest features that you guys can take advantage of. And then lastly, where else have we put this in practice? So we've spoke about Carter Jonas briefly, um, and there are a few examples on the screen where we've had successes with upgrades in the past from various different versions into various different target versions. Okay, and with that, if there are any questions or if there's any more information that you'd like to learn from us on upgrading your existing system to the latest and greatest Dynamics 365, please don't hesitate to contact us via the link below.